Hello and welcome back to the channel. Uh, in today's episode, we're gonna add a background to our platformer and we're also gonna apply parallax effect to it. Uh, so the first question you might have is where to get the background for parallax effect from. And uh, what I did is I went to HIO which many of you probably know uh, here i search for simple body platformer and the first result is going to be this and if you can take a look here you will see that we have some uh, nice cloudy background and let's say some kind of hills that we can use for a parallax effect so you can download this for free and then after you unpack it you can just go to uh where is it 2d platformer game tile sets environment times free and i'm gonna bring the uh sky and valley back and valley front so going back to unity in a art i'm going to create new folder all this back ground and let's bring those in so valley back valley front Come on. okay and then also sky okay uh, with three of these uh, this is valley front, valley back. Yeah, we should be good. So now it's time to apply them. But since we're going to be uh, building a um, parallax effect, uh, we start by doing some uh, something counterintuitive. We're going to add the background to the camera. So I'm going to create um, a, ba a background as a child camera. And then I'm going to get all of this and uh, I don't want to do the animation. Sky free, background and background. Okay, so now as you can see our game is being overlaid by the background. Uh, so it's time to uh, set it up correctly. So let's take the background and I'm going to move it a little bit off screen. Um, let's say 10 should be good and let's start by applying 0 to Y and X on each every um, sprite and then we have to position them so the back's gonna be at 9 and that's gonna be at 8 and we don't see any change right now, but if we go to our main camera and we change the size, you can see that, oops, that's a little bit too big. You can see that we have our um, background uh, sprites applied. Uh, so one thing that I did, I disabled the Cinemachine brain here and also Cinemachine virtual camera. And I will rely on the follow target script uh, to make our camera follow the player. Okay, so uh, now for the uh, for the game, you can see that our background is following our camera, and camera is following our player. So we have that effect uh, where we don't have uh, any missing pieces here basically the background is going to stay behind the camera all the time uh, but uh, let's go with let's try and implement that parallax effect so first things first i'm going to go to environment and time map in a hierarchy and i'm just gonna extend our level a little bit so let's grab basically any tile and just add a little bit to it ok 
okay and now if we if we play that right we are moving and we still have the same background behind um our player all the time so not now to add that parallax effect let's go to scripts and create new script call this parallax uh, back round and i'm gonna open this up in rider and we're gonna need a few things here <coughs> so sorry since uh, the movement of the background will be uh, relying on the camera position we have to get um camera transform and that's gonna be camera transform okay also to calculate how much the camera moved between each uh, update run we will have to store the previous value of the camera transform so i'm going to say actually position so it's going to be previous camera position so we have uh, that done um, and we have to initialize this so camera transforms transform is going to be camera main transform and to initialize the previous camera position we're going to say camera transform position okay and now we're gonna move to late update to update the location of our sprite and this is due to the fact that in late update the uh, current camera position is actually settled and calculated properly so let's do some calculation vector free current camera position it's gonna be camera transform position and then vector free camera movement this frame that's going to be current camera position minus previous camera position and we can just apply that transform position minus equals new vector free uh, camera movement this frame x uh, camera movement this frame y and then zero on set and if we were to apply this calculation to our backgrounds so what i'm doing is just dragging and dropping the script on each background element you would see that basically nothing is changed right background is still following the movement of the camera neatly so let's actually use the um, parallax effect here uh, we're gonna add a serialized field serialized field private vector 2 parallax factor okay so we're gonna use those values to add the parallax so here i can multiply this by parallax parallax factor dot x times parallax factor times y okay uh, and we also have to update our previous camera position so it's gonna be current camera position and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to apply um to just get that updated uh it's not reloading for some reason should rela reload the domain we have some errors maybe no not really let's try and play it 
Uh, oh yeah, now we have the parallax factor. Uh, so I'm gonna add some pretty high parallax factor. So it's gonna be 0.9, 10 for the sky, and then we have five for the back. And let's say three point nine for the front. And now, as you're moving, you can already see that those elements are moving in a different speed, which, which would give us this parallax factor. But given the fact that we applied a pretty high value here, uh, you will see that very uh, fast we will come to the situation where the background has moved um, too far. So we have to find some kind of way um, to repeat that and calculate the position of the background so that we can have this nice infinite effect. So let's get to that. Um, what we're gonna have to do is get a reference to our sprite renderer. So let's do sprite renderer, get component sprite renderer. Okay, um, let's say I would like to have const int um, repeat background times. We're gonna set this to three and that's not gonna be changed ever so we can make it a const. And I'm, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach into my sprite renderer and change the draw mode to tile because I would like to repeat the same sprites many times. And then I'm gonna do sprite renderer size and that's gonna be new vector. So how many times do we want to repeat uh, our sprite in x direction and that's gonna be repeat background times. Uh, we could also make that serialized field to have more control of it, it but three times should be fine and here we're gonna repeat the same value okay uh, then we basically have to do some calculations to know when to repeat the background right so i'm gonna do float texture width maybe sprite renderer a sprite sprite texture width and we also have to know about the pixels per unit for that sprite so that's going to be sprite renderer sprite pixels per unit and having these two values texture um, i can calculate private load sprite with in units and that's gonna be a simply texture width divided by pixels per unit okay and with this done basically what i have to do uh, is to um, check when to um, repeat the background so we reach into camera transform position x minus transform position x is this greater or equal sprite with in units and if so we just change the position to new vector a camera transform uh, position x transform position y transform position z okay and with that done let's see whether we can achieve our effect so we're moving pretty fast here oh no 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 okay let's try jumping again but what you will see is that our background is seamlessly repeated so let's actually zoom out from the scene and see what is happening as you can see, this is seamlessly repeated every single time 
thanks to our calculations right and we can just move and move and move and the background is going to be repeated and uh, the problem is when we move to the other side right uh, the background is not being repeated because our position now uh, we're going into next direction but we can fix that rather easily with matf and check for the absolute value so let's take absolute value of that and let's get rid of that and now it should work both ways. So let's try this. And yeah, let's, let's try moving in the other direction right now. And as you can see, the background is also repeated without any issues. So, as I mentioned, this is how you can easily get this um, wonderful uh, parallax effect. Uh, what I will do right now is just maybe try and make our level a little bit more interesting. So, you can build your own level using the tile palette and tile map with your own ideas. I'm not a level designer, but I just, I'll just try and whip something out very quickly to use for the um for the other tutorials the next tutorials so yeah thank you for that and i'm gonna see you in the next one